Welcome back to the last episode 3.9 of this chapter. In this video, we will talk about running your distributed MPI calculation and later about file I.O. functionality available on Intel Xeon Phi coprocessors. But before this, let's see what it takes to compile and run an MPI application that uses a compute cluster with Intel Xeon Phi coprocessors. We have already seen how to start an MPI application on a coprocessor using the tool MPI Run. Now, if we want to use a heterogeneous cluster or multiple coprocessors, we just need to add their host names in the MPI run command. For example, here we run two MPI processes on coprocessor MIG0, two on MIG1, and two more on the CPU. It is important to remember that we have to provide different executables to processes on the CPU and on coprocessors. In this example, the name of the executable for the CPU architecture is hello, and the executable for the many core architecture is hello.mic. If this application had to be run in a cluster, we would specify the full host names defined in the cluster network or their IP addresses. Of course, if we're running the application on the cluster, we may have hundreds of hosts to specify. It is not practical to have a very long list of arguments for MPI run. However, the functionality of machine files helps in this case. In our machine file, we indicate that we want to run two MPI processes on the local host and two more on mic0 and two more on mic1. However, here comes a complication. The syntax of MPI run allows us to specify only one executable, but we must have different executable names for the local host and for the coprocessor. The solution for Intel MPI is the environment variable iMPI mic postfix. We can set it to some string value, in our case .mic. This tells Intel MPI that the name of the executable for CPU architecture is hello and the name for the executable for the mic architecture is hello.mic. There is also a corresponding environment variable to indicate the prefix rather than postfix. Specifying a prefix may allow one to have CPU and mic executables in different directories. Of course, most real-world MPI applications, in addition to sending and receiving messages, may also read and write data stored in files. How does that work when MPI process is running on the Intel Xeon Phi coprocessor? There are three ways to work with files on coprocessors. The first method, shown here, is configured by default. MPSS configures a RAM disk on Intel Xeon Phi coprocessors, which lives in the memory of the coprocessor. This RAM disk hosts the operating system and may also host the files of users. This disk is limited in size to the RAM size of Xeon Phi coprocessor. Naturally, the RAM disk is volatile, meaning that the data on it does not survive a reboot. However, this is a very fast file system and it may be used for scratch data. The second method is based on virt.io functionality. It overcomes the size limitation of the RAM disk by allowing a coprocessor to read and write files that are physically stored on a hard drive on the host. This storage system is similar to the system used in virtual machines, where a file or a partition on the host is virtualized as a hard drive on the virtual machine. Similarly, a file or a partition on the host can be virtualized as a hard drive on Intel Xeon Phi coprocessor. The storage system gives an Intel Xeon Phi coprocessor up to 2 terabytes of disk space. The I.O. operations to virtual disk are cached by the operating system, where I.O. may also be useful for scratch data and for access to large read-only datasets. Finally, the third method is based on the distributed file systems. This method goes beyond the RAM disk and virt.io functionality and flexibility because one directory may be shared between multiple coprocessors across a cluster. The standard Linux tool, NFS, is supported on the coprocessors and easy to set up in MPSS. However, because NFS operates on top of the TCP IP, it has the same performance limitation as the TCP IP stack. Nevertheless, NFS is useful, for example, to share small datasets and directories with executables and libraries. To overcome the performance limit of NFS, Xeon Phi coprocessors can be configured with a distributed file system called Luster. Luster is a scalable storage solution and it can operate over InfiniBand. Scalability of Luster is present in both the client and the server end. On the client end, the performance of Luster scales with multiple reading and writing threads. On the server end, Luster performance and capacity scales with the number of storage hosts and drives. 
For instructions on using the RAM disk, the VertIO and distributed file systems, NFS and Luster, and also for performance benchmarks for those systems, refer to the Skullfax research publication, xeonfi.com slash papers slash IO. That is all for now about programming modes available with Intel Xeon Fi coprocessors. In the next chapter, number 4, we'll talk about expressing parallelism, data parallelism with vector or CMD operations, threads or tasks parallelism in shared memory with OpenMP, and distributed memory process parallelism implemented with MPI message passing interface. If you're familiar with those topics, feel free to skip those episodes and go directly to chapter 5, where we'll start talking about various optimization methods available for both Intel Xeon Phi and Intel Xeon architectures, meaning both coprocessors and CPUs. Thank you for tuning in, and I hope to see you in the next episode.